This episode of Hack5 is brought to you by Domain.com. This would be main stage and a little kitchenette. You know. And then look at that. So, these huge double doors come into pretty large office with uh, shelving all over it. No, no. There's attorneys in there now. And then there's a little uh, little door back here that leads to a fire escape. And then two offices here. They look like they're about 80 square feet each, something like that. So, thinking, pack shop, my office, you're at it, bay. Bricks, real bricks. The good kind, not the fake kind. Bringing the bricks back. <sighs> yeah, looks good. So, I know that that's shaky and wobbly, but. And power there. And it looks like, looks like, find out if it's Cat5 or, or what. Yeah. Good size. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And this is, of course, your weekly dose of Techno Loss. Yay! Something's Where are we? Here. Howdy, partner, and welcome to Hack5, your weekly dose of Techno Lust. I'm your rootin' tootin' host, Darren Kitchen. Hey, y'all. I'm Shannon Morse, and we have plenty of cool stuff coming up for you this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Since when did you go country? I don't know. It's just I'm playing Red Dead Redemption, and I'm like crazy oh, about like yes. hog times and whores. You know what else is good? That. You mean our giraffe? Yes, our giraffe. We've this is kind of like an inside Hack Five joke where we've been saying since season one, you know, ah, we'll make it when we've got a jib. It we really, got a jib. We made it. Yeah. Can you move the jib? I want to see it move. Yay! Ooh. Okay. Now everybody's throwing up. All right. Aww. Anyway. Um, I'm just really stoked because Paul back there is managing our Cobra Crane, which cobra. makes him the Cobra Commander. <laughs> we have a new set. We do! I, I really like what you guys did. So apparently the guys were up until like 4 a.m. yesterday building this new set. And I gotta say, it looks really nice. Part it doesn't look tired. completely finished yet, so I'm assuming this is like a beta? Yeah, it's kind of like... Um, you remember in Empire Strikes Back, it was like, it was mostly functional. Yeah. It's just little bits and pieces weren't there. So we're working <laughs> right. on it. Yeah, We'd love to hear your suggestions. <laughs> this is, I think, like the seventh or eighth iteration of the set. It's good, right? Yeah, cheers to the end of an era. Cheers to the end of one of many eras to come. Errors, I said. Errors. Errors. Cheers, <laughs> to, cheers to all of the Hack 5 Firehouse errors. These weren't errors. Yes, they were. <laughs> These are it's an awesome. ID10T error. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. I hope you enjoyed our, our clips. Yes, and I hope that they meant something to you as much as they do to us. We were going through a bunch of old clips and you've realizing basically just seen the evolution evolution of our, our firehouse set. So you saw everything from the beginnings, like our, our teeny tiny terrible set with a shelf to everything that you see here now. But th they're not gonna understand the, the way that we understand this place with the like, you know, clogged up sink and the <laughs> issue with the fruit flies and the crazy hot summers. <laughs> how and it gets super hot and how we had to install this stupid AC mm -hmm. things and then turn them off every time we turn yeah. on the oh, lights. Oh, and the wonderful music coming from downstairs. And the, oh, that was really bad so music. So we're very excited oh to be making our move into the warehouse. I'm sorry, I'm a little under the weather today, but I'm trying to be excited because we have some fantastic feedback from you guys to go over. We do. Before, before next week, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything like as long as sheetrock gets done. Hooray, contractors! moving into the warehouse tomorrow, I, I hope, <gasps> next week's episode. And we apparently don't have anything packed yet, so <laughs> that'll be fun. Whatever, we'll be all right. <laughs> Did you hire movers? Yeah. Okay, good. Ish. 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 Yeah. Should, we, right. should we tell yeah. them about your, your payment fun times with the movers? No. 
Okay. That will be left for the after show. All right, so we have some feedback. I'll go ahead and read them off. Please do. Or we could just trade back and forth. Yeah, yeah. So the first one's from, I don't know who it's from. It's, it says, hack by people. I'm sure I'm not the only one to write in, but the cell phone bars do actually mean things. So if you remember last week, we had discussed um, how cell phone bars don't really mean anything and how it's really hard to know if you're actually connected or not. Because well, I mean, I, I just feel like more, like it's more of a marketing term than anything else. Because like <laughs> some phones have like four bars and so five. And they're like, oh, I'm gonna make a phone that's gonna have six. <laughs> so this you know, writer it goes said to eleven as they it were. actually correspond to SNR ah, of signal cellular noise ratio. signals. What is it? Signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio. It's yes. certainly not well advertised for sure, but you can see the SNR in settings about phone status. That's on It Android. also gives you the EMEI IP Mac and Bluetooth address. Pretty nice info. All things said, but certainly should be less clicks. Great stuff Just for sharing. debugging. Yes, Yay. yes. I still, th hey, it's a free app. I still think it's a really great thing because you get to see charts, charts and graphs. I mean, if you can make charts <laughs> and graphs, you win. Uh, we got another feedback here. Uh, someone says, hello, I wanted to share two things with you. First, my favorite Android app is called Drive Droid, and it basically lets you boot from your cell phone. It uses your cell as a bootable USB stick. Pretty nice. Now, the other story, a few weeks ago, you told us a story about your bank not understanding the importance of encryption. I had an argument with my wife. I'm surprised that nearly never happens uh, with spouses. Basically, my point was that we need to encrypt all of our communications and not be spied on. And she said that she believes that we aren't spied on enough, yet wants <laughs> to the state to install even more surveillance. And so she used the argument that, you know, that someone who does encrypt stuff has something to hide. And the recording of the internet helps catch criminals. And so how do you respond to that kind of argument? Uh, thanks, Geek01. Um, I hope that, that you guys... Uh, That's a good are question. To work that out? It's a good question, and we get it a lot. And I've heard the same thing from a lot of my own family members: is, well, I got nothing to hide, so okay. I'm fine with surveillance. Well, all right. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for the tip on that app. That sounds really cool, and yes. also a great way to say, I don't know, uh, travel cross borders, and say, for instance, have a boring Windows installation on your laptop while you actually have the real stuff on your phone <laughs> ready to boot off of the USB. So thank you, that sounds really cool. As far as the I have nothing to hide argument and, and your particular case with your wife notwithstanding, but generally speaking, the way that I see it is privacy is a right. Okay, you have the right to privacy, but like all rights, if you don't exercise those rights, they're gonna kind of de facto disappear and that's not going to be good. So when you start getting complicit and saying like, oh, I have nothing to hide, or finding whatever way you need to justify or rationalize for yourself why, you know, and maybe it's because, yes, this is a really difficult thing, especially nowadays, it's very difficult to maintain privacy. Uh, but rather than just like forego that because it's too hard, let's go shopping, um, if you don't exercise those rights, you're gonna lose them. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we don't wor live in a world where that is the case. Remember, it's the government that has to, you know, get your permission to invade your privacy, not the other way around, right? So let's it's keep that It's kind of way. like, yeah, you want to encrypt things, and a lot of people say, you know, yeah, oh, no, that's, I I'm fine with just having things out there. They can snoop through my stuff. I got nothing to hide. But how would you feel if a government worker, somebody you don't know, a complete stranger, walked into your house and started sifting through your underwear drawer? Like, how would, how would that make you feel? Mm -hmm. It would make you feel like you've been violated, right? My Scooby-Doo boxers would not appreciate exactly. that. Exactly. I would hate it if somebody found my Batman underwear. Okay or just installed a camera in your bathroom. I'm just saying, like, exactly. th th it's a slippery slope, so the best thing we can all do is just use, and this is really an amazing time. This year, by the way, has been fantastic. There have yeah. been so many awesome advances in technology as far as privacy is concerned, coming out of Snowden revelations that are very exciting, oh that are actually empowering. There's also a lot of snake oil. Now is oil. the time to bring a back lot. rat wire. Uh, it kind of is. Yeah. Dude. Hey, I hear we're building a new studio. Uh, hey. Huh. Feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what you'd like to see. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm sure we're going to yes. have a lively discussion in the comments, uh, and we should probably continue I will continue be on. happy to jump in on those comments with you guys because I have so much to say about it. Great. Now, our next one comes from, we'll tell you at the end. So he says, can't wait to try out some of those apps. I couldn't help but notice, notice Darren bringing up the fact that Kali didn't have Flash in the Ice Weasel browser. Easy way to get that would be to go to your terminal, apt get install snapped. Once you install the Synaptic Package Manager, you can install Flash and many other goodies from there. And that is from Nathan in regards to your Ice Weasel browser. Yes, and that's a good point. However, I would also like to point out that um, 
Flash is, an, I, I don't want to say like broad statements like inherently insecure, but. Hey man, Flash, Flash is great for 1990s videos, okay? Thank you. Right. Thank you, and that's why I would like to point out awesomeness that is HTML5. You know, an open spec <laughs> that can run on anything um, and that isn't beholden to a company like Adobe. Uh, so, no, I think Kali made the right decision in not including it. And yeah, of course, you can install whatever you'd like. It's your mm -hmm. operating system. Hell, you're running as root. <laughs> um, <it's a, laughs> Kali is an interesting beast. But, um, but yeah, that's good stuff. And I love that, uh, that speedof.me uh, oh, website. Yeah because Absolutely. it runs fantastic on a phone, and it's probably worth pointing out that, as, as uh, Seb showed me, a lot of carriers, especially US carriers, like to, I don't know, alter the results of speedtest.net because you know that's the de facto one everyone goes to, and so there's ways to make it look like your bandwidth is a lot more than it actually is. So it's always good to get a second opinion. Thank you. And our last one is in regards to the applications that we were sharing last week in the warehouse. So they said, just watch the warehouse episode. Thought you might like Juice SSH. It's the best app ever. Yes. Now all I need is a Galaxy Note 4 with a killer hardware keyboard case, and I'll have what I've always wanted, a pocket workhorse. And that's from Greg. Yes. Uh, I highly recommend that Anchor Bluetooth keyboard. It's really nice. The aluminum one. Uh, oh, I basically yeah. do that with my awesome phone. I'm really sad that they're not making a sequel to the the uh, Z Ultra. Yeah, uh, a lot of people asked, uh, it's, a sub, it's an Xperia Z Ultra. I might go to a Nexus 6. I don't know. I need at least... I just pre-ordered a uh, Note 4 on mm. Verizon. So if you guys want to see some... Are you going to check out the VR thing? Yeah, well, I was Ooh, thinking. On the show. I was I thinking about it. some specific, you know, some hacks and stuff that I can do uh, with the Note 4. It's got a bigger Kelly screen. Linux on it. Yeah, there you go. It's got a better, better camera, but I want to know what kind of hacks I can do. So if you guys have any ideas for uh, a Note 4 hacks, I let me know. I love the Note series. I miss my S Pen. <laughs> um, that said, uh, Juice is awesome. I rock that constantly. Um, as well as I'll give a shout out to Better Terminal Emulator Pro, uh, really nice one, as well as ConnectBot and Terminal Emulator and and FTP and 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 I could go on for a while. <laughs> Cena BT term for Bluetooth. If you, you use one of those little Arduino Bluetooth module guys, um, yeah. So yay, those are all some of my favorites. But I love when we share because I didn't know about the next one, which yeah. sounds like a really fantastic app. We got a. Uh, comment that says, hi, another app that I've found very useful is Wi-Fi Mapper Maker by Recursive Pizza. pizza. And <laughs> can we get some props to Recursive Pizza? Uh, it shows you the coverage on a map and you can export it into a, in 3D on Google Earth. I've already started one here in the UK. Just add as a live network link in Google Earth. He links cool. to the KML file that we'll put in the show notes. Thank you guys, love the warehouse. Duncan, thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Duncan. We should probably also point out Wiggle.net uh, is a fantastic resource for also you can submit your uh, Kismet, uh, Kismet war driving sessions as, as they were. In fact, we should probably do a follow up because there is a fantastic tutorial. I guess we'll have to annotate link that as well because hmm. there's an awesome tutorial that one of our very own Wi-Fi Pineapple users put up about uh, great ways to do some Wi-Fi pineapple Yay. kismet drone recording with GPS and everything. It would make a great segment. We should do that. We should have them on the show or just do it here. Yes, It'd be absolutely. Good stuff. And yes, map all the things. Good <laughs> stuff. So thank you everybody for sending in the feedback. Of course, we got all of those over at feedback at hak5.org. We don't necessarily have time to answer all of them. We Nevertheless, them we obviously don't have time to put them all on Hack5, but as Darren said, we do I open them up in Gmail and I go, J, 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 J. <laughs> hey, question mark. You get a lot of keyboard shortcuts there. It's That's good very stuff. true. J is next. Um, and what else is next is moving to the warehouse. So yes. at this point, we're going to just start breaking it down. We get a little treat for you guys right after the break. I know a little before and after. It's kind of amazing to see how much of a mess we have made in three <laughs> years. And we're looking forward to making a new one with a zip line and a half pipe. Seb, I'm getting the half pipe. I'm getting the half pipe. No. But we want the half pipe. Two quarter pipes. Oh, come on. Uh, we'll do it. Roller, roller skates. skates. There we go. And treadmill and 3D printers. And well, thanks for sticking colors. with us through this transition period. Until next week, I'm Darren Kitchen. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Bye. Doesn't matter if you're a scissor lift or a skizzer lift. When you have that brilliant idea and it hits you and you're like, what?
what? You need to snag yourself a domain name and web hosting fast. And with Domain.com's quick domain discovery system and their easy checkout process, you can stutter your way through an ad read to your heart's content and you'll have your website up and running in no time. And you know what? I love Domain.com and that is the honest truth. Deep in my heart, there is a place right for them. Not just because they're affordable, reliable, and easy to use, but because they are the coolest peeps I've ever had the awesome chance to hang out with up in the northern part of the US, that place that we call Portland. Yes. Plus, Domain.com's uh, social media presence at Domain.com and their great customer support makes it a really fun place to do business. And they're huge fans of Hack5. If I haven't mentioned it before, they want to hook you up with the coupon code HAK5 at checkout, and that's going to get you an extra 15% off. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. This is a public service announcement. Friends do not let friends not use two-factor authentication. That's a double negative. Yeah, I know. So what is two-factor authentication? Why do you need it? Well, simply put, authentication is just logging into that thing, be it your social network or your email, and you probably do it a dozen times a day. And a factor is like that method of logging in, and you're probably doing it with the password. It's that secret thing that only you know. And if your password gets stolen or leaked or lost, well, there goes the neighborhood. Two-factor authentication, on the other hand, typically means using both a password, which is that secret thing that you know, and something else, like a secret token that only you have. Google has had two-factor authentication since 2011 using the Google Authenticator app. You type in your passcode, as usual, and then you have to type in a special PIN code from the app that's only good for a minute. And now it's gonna get so much easier, and you can do it! with just one finger. That's right, this is the universal second factor. It's an open specification from the FIDO Alliance and it makes public key crypto really easy. It's made of all these big companies that are really cool like Google and Visa and PayPal and MasterCard and Discover and a whole bunch more, including our friends over at Yubico. We've actually shown their YubiKeys on Hack5 for logging into your own servers and such, but this is so much easier. The latest YubiKey with U2F is super simple. You type in your password like usual, and when asked, you just touch the YubiKey. That's it. Yeah, and now it's supported right into Chrome, so you can just log into your Google account and soon a whole bunch more, because as the standard gets adopted, then you'll have that same kind of security on like all of the sites. And it's pretty straightforward for developers too. Both Google and Yubico have reference code up on their GitHub repositories. So really now you have no excuse to not use two-factor authentication. This has been a public service announcement from the Hack5. We didn't mention the things about the support of this on the show at thehackshop.com. H-I-K-Shop.com. That's okay, they know. I know. They know where to find I us. Know. It's in the show notes. I know. Cheers. To your pants. To my pants? <laughs>